In this video, we're going to look at some properties of logarithms. And traditionally, I think this is one of the sticking points for students because some of these things are, I don't know, I don't want to say that they're not intuitive, but they look a little pretty complicated. And logarithms in general, logarithms in general look fairly complicated. And some of these properties are kind of like, hey, why does that work? Um, so I hope to be able to try to explain that. And we're going to talk not only about the properties, but also using some of them. So the first property we're going to talk about is called the product rule. Okay, and for exponents, the product rule looks like this. If we have the same base and we're multiplying two, uh, two things together, we can just add their exponents. So you know, b to the r times b to the s equals b to the r plus s. Well, we know that exponents and logarithms are the same thing. And so if I had, uh, and here's an example of the product rule working for exponents. If I had a logarithm that looked like this, what this says, right, is that log base 3 of 3 to the 3 squared, that's an exponent. In fact, that, that's 2. Because, because look, that is uh, log base 3 of 9 is 2. Log base 3 of 3 is 1. And so we add 2 and 1 and we get 3, which can also be said, written as log base 3 of 27. And so what we have here is is what's known as the product rule for logarithms. Uh, and it's it's if you have an argument that is like a composite number, meaning we can we have it has factors, if it benefits you at all to break those factors up, it's just like you're adding two logarithms together. So just like how with the exponents, when we added those exponents, uh, when, when when we were multiplying, we ended up adding the exponents. Well, when we're multiplying two different terms in the argument, it's like we're adding the values of the logarithms, right? That we're adding those things together. So the product rule, that that's pretty important. And it makes sense. And the next one we're probably going to talk about is the quotient rule. Okay, the quotient rule for exponents is b to, b to the r power divided by b to the s power is equal to b to the r minus s. So this should work also for uh, for logarithms, right? So if we had log base 3 of 3 squared divided by 3, well, like you could simplify that argument right away and say that's just log base 3 of 3, of course. Um, or you can break it up and can, this could be, this would be something that you would do if it's beneficial to you. And you'll find the whole reason we talk about this is because it often is beneficial. Uh, but you could break that up into log base 3 of 9 minus log base 3 of 3. And so log base 3 of 9 is 2, log base 3 of 3 is 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1. Um, and so this is what's known as the quotient rule for logarithms. Okay, This is uh, very useful, and, and we'll, we'll put some of that into play here in a minute. And then the last one we'll talk about for now is the exponent rule. So this is, we call this like the, the power rule when we, when we did uh, exponents. We said powers of powers, we multiply powers. So I think it makes sense if that you, if you had a logarithm and you were raising it to a power, you just multiply by that power because you'd be raising a power, which is a logarithm, to another power. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, so in an exponent form, b to the r to the p power, b to the r p power. For, uh, for a logarithm, if we had log base 2 of 8 squared, we could bring the 2 down in front and say that that's just 2 times a log base 2 of 8. So we'd be multiplying those exponents together, right? 2 and log base 2 of 8, those are both exponents. And log base 2 of 8 is just 3, so that's just 2 times 3, or 6. Now there's another way to think of this too, and, and I encourage you to think of it this way, generally speaking, is that you should always simplify that argument if it can be reduced down to a base, a smallest possible base, you should do that. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be easier to evaluate the logarithm uh, if the argument has, is as small as possible. Uh, the argument is as small as possible. So, so another way to think of it then: log base two of eight squared. Okay, that's so bring the two in front. Now that's a log base two of two cubed. You can bring the three down in front, so it's two times three. And then you see there, log base two of two. That's one. So that's it's still six. Okay. Um, so. Uh, log base b of r to the p power is the same thing as p times log base b of r. This one is particularly useful, I think, um, but we're going to we're gonna try to make use of, of all of them here. So here's an example. Uh, log base 2 of 5 and log base 2 of 3 are both given. They're some number, okay? And if it's asking me to find what's the log base 2 of 15. Well, I can use what we just talked about and say, all right, the log base 2 of 15 that is the same thing because 
15 is like 5 times 3, right? I can say that's the log base 2 of 5 plus the log base 2 of 3. And those two things here, they're given. Now, it's, it's not common that you would be given those two things, but it is common that you might know, you might be able to know at least one of the factors. For example, like if, let's go just, if we had gone a different problem, and I had said like log base 2 of 10, that could be written as log base 2 of 2 plus log base 2 of 5, right? Because because uh, 10 is just 2 times 5. So this is, we know what that is, that's just 1. And so then all I would have to do is evaluate one thing there. In fact, I have it for this problem. So I can tell you that log base 2 of 10 is 1 plus 2.3219. So it's 3.3219. Um, now, uh, so in order to do this, right, we just substitute these things in. Log base 2 of 5 is 2.3219 plus 1.585. I honestly have no idea what that is, but it doesn't matter. You just add them up and that's the answer. Okay, let's go to the next problem. So log base 6 of 72 plus log base 6 of 3. Now, if I looked at either of these individually, there's not much I could do. Um, so, well, I mean, there's a little bit, right? Because I could do something to that log base 6 of 72. But then I'd be stuck with that log base 6 of 3. Because 6 to what power gives me 3? I don't know. Like, it's not it's not 1 half, right? Because it's 6 of those square root of 6 is not 3. So this is an issue. Um, and so what we could do is we can we can do, we would say, all right, this is the same thing, log base 6 of 72 plus log base 6 of 3, that's the same thing as log base 6 of 72 times 3, which is 216, so log base 6 of 216. Well, then we can say, oh, 216, log base, oops, sorry, log base 6, log base 6 of 216, 6 cubed is 216. Then I can use the power rule to bring the 3 down and say that that's 3 times a log base 6 of 6. Oh, that's just 1, so this is just 3 times 1, or 3. So the answer to this one is 3. Okay, here's a similar looking problem. Okay, so now we see that it's, it's a minus in the middle, so this implies we're going to use the quotient rule for uh, logarithms. So we can write this as the log base 6 of 72. That's the positive number. Notice this is positive. This one's negative. So the positive argument is going to go on top. The argument of the negative one is going to go on the bottom. So this is now just the same thing as a log base 2 of 36. Oh, uh, sorry, log base 6 of 36. So that is going to be log base 6 of 6 squared. Power rule brings a 2 down. So that's 2 times a log base 6 of 6. And then log base 6 of 6 is 1. So this is just 2. Okay, so, right, log base 6 is 6. 6 to what power gives me 6? First power, so it's 1. And this is a typical kind of problem that you'll see a lot of times on, like, standardized tests and stuff. Um, it says express log base b of x divided by yz in terms of the logarithms of x, y, and z. What this is saying is break this apart into three logarithms where you have log one logarithm where the, the only variable in an argument is x, another one where the only variable in the argument is y, and a third one where it's z. And so we can do this by applying both the quotient and the product rule, right? So let's look at the quotient rule first. This would be like log base b of x, log base b of x, and then minus log base b of yz, right? That's in the denominator is yz. But this isn't what it's asking for because it doesn't want to have a log, log with y and z in it. So what we can do is go a step farther and say, all right, now let's just look at that log base b of yz. Well, that's the log base b of y plus, plus, plus the log base b of z, right? So we end up with log base b of x minus the quantity of, of these two things. And that's a fine way to leave it, but usually you'll distribute that negative through, and you'll say that this is equal to log base b of x minus log base b of y minus log base b of z. And something I'd like you to notice here is that the y and the z were both in the denominator of our original argument, and the, the coefficient, like the, the sign of both of them, let me use a different color for this, 
the sign the sign of both of them was was negative right they were both in the denominator was negative the x had a was in the numerator its sign in front of it was positive and so this can be kind of a shortcut to doing these sorts of problems is just if you see something in the in the numerator it's going to come out and be positive if something was originally in the denominator it's going to come out and be negative and now we're sometimes asked to go the other way here so two log base b of x plus three log base b of y minus four log base b of z the first thing i'm going to do for this one is i'm going to bring the exponent back up right if we think about the order of operations P for, uh, for his parentheses and then E exponent that comes before multiplication or division, which we're talking about the product rule and the quotient rule. So the power power rule for for logarithms tells me I can write this as log base B of X squared plus log base B of Y cubed minus log base B of Z to the fourth. Hey, okay, now. Uh, I can I can think about what I ju we just said about the numerators and the denominators and notice that uh, this term and this term are positive while this term is negative. So this one this argument is going to go in the denominator while these two go in the numerator of my single logarithm. So log base b of x squared y cubed divided by z to the fourth. So notice, like this, this, this one here ended up in the denominator because it was negative. These two here ended up in the numerator because they were positive. And now, let's if we change the sign, if we just go about changing the sign of one of these things, let's see how it changes it. So compared to the previous problem, the only thing that changed was this negative sign here. And so I don't even have to redo this. It's the same procedure, but because the y, because the log with the y in it was negative, that y y to the third after I bring the exponent up is going to end up now in the denominator. So uh, we can write this then as log base b of and then the x squared will be in the numerator and the y cubed and the z to the fourth are in the denominator. All right. One last problem and we've seen something like this before and we didn't need to use any of these logarithm properties to solve it and you, you definitely don't need a logarithm property to solve this one. But I think, and I, I, I may be wrong about this, but I think using the logarithm properties helps with, with this with this kind of problem. So let's see how this works. We can right away uh, we can do the uh, we can do the quotient rule here. So we can say, all right, now this is the log base one fifth of the cube root of twenty five, right, uh, and then minus log base one fifth of one hundred and twenty five. Okay, that's just the quotient rule and now what we can do is work on those individual arguments to see if we can reduce them down to like the simplest thing we can come up with so one one thing we can say is that log base one-fifth of the cube root of 25 is the same thing as 25 to the one-third power so we can do that uh, and then so we could do something similar here log base one-fifth of five cubed right 125 that's five cubed maybe that'll help me Let's see if I can, oh, look, so if this is 5 and this is 25, I can rewrite 25 as 5. So let's do that. Let's say that this is log base 1 fifth of 5. Now that's going to be to the 2 third to the 2 thirds power, right? Because I made it 5 squared and 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. Minus log base 1 fifth of 5 to the third. We still have that. So I have the third there. Okay. Ooh. Now let's bring the exponents down because it's a power rule now. So if we say that that's going to be two thirds times log base one fifth of five minus three times log base one fifth of five. Well, now all I really need to know is what is the log base one fifth of five? Or in other words, what power do I have to raise one fifth to? What power do I have to raise one fifth to in order to get to five? So, you know, you, you can think of that any way you want, but one fifth to what power gives me five? Well, X is gonna be equal to negative one here, right? So I can substitute in negative one. So this is just gonna be, this is just gonna end up being two thirds times negative one minus three times negative one. And so I don't know what this is. This is negative two thirds plus three. 
and so that's uh, negative two-thirds and then plus nine-thirds this is equal to seven-thirds so if you were to type this into a calculator and you can you just have to use a bit log base and use one-fifth or you can use a change base formula which we haven't talked about yet uh, you'll find that the answer is seven thirds or it'll probably give you a decimal right away what would that decimal be 2.3333333 um so anyway that's how you can use properties of logarithms to simplify very ugly looking uh logarithmic expressions or even logarithmic equations which we'll get to later